Hello everybody, my name is Gabor Mesaros and this is the Genomics Bootcamp where we speak about genomics from the beginner's perspective. Well, today we will speak about Plink, uh, how to start this uh, program and what are the, some of the most common mistakes that are being made when starting Plink. Uh, so here we are on the Plink website uh, where we get uh, the Plink uh, from. There are multiple different versions of Plink as you might have noticed, uh, but uh, don't worry about it just now. I will tell uh, something about it at the end of this video. For now, go for the Plink 1.9 website where you find the download section, where you just uh, click the appropriate download button. And well, of course, considering your uh, operating system, because if you download the Plink for a different operating system that you have, it will not work. So uh, you download it, it will be a zip file, you unzip it, uh, and well, there will be a multiple different files, but the only relevant one for us is uh, Plink uh, exe or without this extension if you are using the Linux or Mac version. If you start Plink uh, normally, this uh, results into just a weird blip on the screen and uh, nothing else happens. So let me demonstrate what I mean. So if you either by double clicking, I, by pressing enter, it just basically you see uh, down here or also on the screen that there is, there is a little beep, blip, that, but nothing else happens. Uh, this is because uh, the Plink uh, opens and uh, and the yeah, notice is that there are no input files and closes uh, straight away. So there is a different means how to open it uh, so that it also stays on the screen. Uh, also uh, here I would add that Plink is uh, not a program that you would need to install in conventional sense. So there is no setup procedure. It's just a program or an executable file that you run. But now how to make it stay on the screen? You have to st start it from the command prompt. The easiest way to start command prompt uh, in, well, in a, on a Windows uh, 10 computer uh, is by clicking uh, into this search area. If you ever uh, searched for command prompt, uh, then you have it here, but it's most likely not the case uh, for you. So then uh, you just uh, type here CMD and hit enter. And this is then uh, the, the command prompt. So this is this black uh, screen. Uh, now you need to uh, navigate to the uh, to the place where the uh, link exe file is located. So for me, this is uh, uh, the uh, on the D drive analysis and the uh, Genomics Bootcamp demo demo file. If you need to change uh, the drive, uh, which I need to do, uh, you just uh, put uh, the drive name. So this is in this case D and the colon uh, that it, change, it changes to the drive. And then when you need to change to uh, directories, then you type uh, CD as for change directory space and the directory name in my case, analysis. Uh, so it comes uh, to the analysis directory and you see that there is a, well, the link file is in the one follow up, uh, directory, so you still need to type CD and uh, and the directory name. Now it is uh, possible to shorten this procedure by if you start to try, start to type the directory name and uh, at some point, uh, well, if there are no other matches and uh, for that directory uh, and uh, you hit tab, it auto completes. So you see that there is just uh, the directory name just jumped in. So hit enter and we are here uh, at the at the appropriate directory. Now here you if you type uh, Plink, then the uh, Plink program actually executes, uh, but also closes again, but at least we see that uh, something happened. In this case, uh, Plink uh, just starts normally, but then recognizes that there are no input uh, parameters that you need to then uh, include depending on what you want to do. And of course we will do it in uh, some of the next, uh, next occasions, but for now, this is where we want it to get uh, to. Well, there are some quite frequent uh, issues uh, when it comes to starting Plink. Uh, 
and it's very interesting and important to to try these ones out, uh, namely because uh, if you if you do a mistake or an error knowingly, then you can actually check what error messages produces, and when you see that error message uh, when you do these mistakes uh, unknowingly, and, and I assure you that you will do many mistakes uh, throughout the course of your uh, career when it comes to, uh, to, to programming and, and uh, starting various kinds of programs. It, but if you recognize the error messages, then you can more quickly trace down the source of these errors. And uh, one of the most common errors are simple typos. Uh, for example, let's see what happens if we try to uh, call Plink with an obvious, with an obvious typo. And uh, well, the error message comes back that is a not a recognized internal or external command. Again, uh, the uh, other very frequent error is when you uh, well, you will try to start the plink from a from a, a folder where it is it's not uh, not there, so the where the, the executable file is not located at, or when you accidentally uh, delete the uh, yeah, the Plink uh, executable file. Because right now we have it easy and it just this is just the only file in the directory, but uh, later on you will see that there will be many files and uh, uh, if uh, you move some of them or delete some of them, then it might happen that the, the Plink executable file is also deleted. So uh, let's see what happens uh, uh, then. So we now deleted the uh, Plink file and now we will try to start it uh, normally but again uh, what we have here is a similar error message that is not a recognized internal or external command which means if you see this kind of an error message then you will have uh, at least some clue what to look at and uh, and uh, how to solve it uh, in the future let's go back uh, now for the for the plinka versions uh, as I mentioned earlier, and I will start with the uh, well, the oldest uh, Plink version, that is uh, the uh, famous uh, Plink 1.07 uh, that you see. It's uh, quite already quite old already, with the last release in 2009. In terms of basic functions, uh, this uh, uh, this version can do most of the, the stuff we are interested in. But uh, well, the newer versions, of course, are well newer, better, more functions, more functionalities, and somewhat easier to use. So we uh, focus our attention uh, that direction. The other end of the scale is uh, Plink uh, 2, which is uh, in an alpha version. So you see that this is uh, in a in a development version that you could actually download uh, and it's, it's uh, and try out so it is being being actively uh, developed so if you want to be a part of the uh, development efforts so there is also mailing list and all other uh, good things uh, associated with this uh, with this program or with, with this version so certainly you are invited to to, to participate if you uh, use the plink uh, for your own uh, purposes of the purposes of you for your analysis uh, then at this point um, uh, I believe the Plink 1.9 is uh, the the most uh, appropriate version to do so so it's uh, well it's uh, uh, listed as, as a beta 1.9 beta but it's, it's still uh, uh, the, the version that is is being properly tested and it's noted also in the on the Plink website that this has a stable uh, version. So this is also what we will use uh, during the during the analysis within the genomics bootcamp. So that was it uh, for starting the uh, Plink program. Uh, I promise you that some of the in the next videos we also will go more in depth and actually we'll do some kind of analysis with Plink. Uh, but as for now, if you like this video, just hit the like button and well, also there is a subscribe button somewhere around here. So if you like the, con if you like the content in general, then well, just push that. 
And uh, as for now, thank you for your time and uh, have a nice day.